This episode of The Blur Mob contains explicit language. While we want everyone to enjoy the show, sometimes we may say things that are not appropriate for all ages. So, in other words, mom, dad, granny, we cussing. Discretion is advised. And you mm-hmm. think he made it out, and then Vagar just comes out of nowhere and takes the biggest bubble bass bite out of that man's dragon. <laughs> Where's my pickles? <laughs> but, King G, Gross Sight, ENT, <laughs> Rock with it, Rock with it, Rock with it, Rock with it. Let me, let me pop my shit. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pop my shit. Hands up. What's up, y'all, and welcome to the Blurred Mob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I am your host, Foop, joined by my co-host, Ryan. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other streaming service, make sure you hit that follow button so you can get updates from the mob. And if you lovely people are watching us on YouTube, make sure to smash that like button, destroy that subscribe button, leave a comment and let us know what you thought about the video, and turn on those bell notifications for future uploads. That was real intense. But it is another Foop and Ryan episode. Um, Ralph is not here with us today, but he'll be back. Um, we have come here today to do a mob review of HBO Max's House of the Dragon Season 1. Um, this is your first time listening to one of our mob reviews. I just want to let you know that this is a spoiler-filled episode. So if you have not finished House of the Dragon... Or if you even missed the last episode, I would advise you to hit that pause button, go watch it, come back, and tune into the conversation. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm definitely ready to jump into this. This, For those who listen to the Lord of the Rings mob review, I just want to let you know that this is going to be a complete vibe change. Completely different. This is about to be a completely different vibe change. So... House of the Dragon um, premiered August 21st, I believe, 2022. Something like that. That was a Sunday. Was it? (laughs) We know it was like 10 Sundays ago. (laughs) We know it was a Sunday. Let me me go back. Yeah, August 21st, 2022, Uh and it just ended um, on the 20th, October 23rd. So it just finished with its first. 10 episode season time flew um, by for this series it it honestly did and yeah. i i enjoyed every minute of it i think mm-hmm. um i think they did a really good job but let's go ahead and jump into it so house of the dragon is the prequel series to game of thrones focusing on the Targaryens. um with As we know with prequel or sequel series, sometimes it doesn't live up to the hype as the original. So my first hot take for this mob review is that did House of the Dragon live up to the hype from Game of Thrones? For the fact that my expectations were low due to season 7 and 8, oh, it went past my expectations. The drama was there. Some of the pacing could have been better due to the time skips, but in real life, it was paced very well. Interesting characters. The cinematography ain't still the show. It lived up to my expectations. It reminded me of the earlier seasons of Game of Thrones. Like, mm. not, yes, we had dragons, but they weren't so focused on the CGI with the dragons. They used, they used the dragons to tell the story to incorporate them in the story and i think they did that well but it reminded me of the earlier seasons of game of thrones because it gives you that that people politic um us deceiving and us scheming against each other and oh i Mm -hmm. thought they were friends oh i thought he was a cool dude oh he's weird oh he's shady like and it gave like a good like a I won't say deep dive because we deep dove into some characters and then some characters we saw on the surface but I would say they did a good job executing every character that we saw on the screen like every 
character yeah. had a purpose. Every character's action had a reaction. Every character's action had consequences. And I love the way they explored the Seven Kingdoms in the House of the Dragon. Because not only did they focus on the Targaryens, they focused on how the Targaryen drama was affecting all of the other houses. Yep. And it was also cool to see houses that, um, older houses that evolved into the ones that we're familiar with with Game of Thrones. Like, I saw something on Twitter where the High Towers are the ancestors to, um, was there Marjorie in them? The, uh, yeah, the um, Tully's. Well, no, not the no, Tully's. No, that's not Tully. Ah. Uh, Mar- Marjorie and her grandma, or her yeah, slash Mar- mama. Yeah. Dang, it starts with an H. I'm gonna look this up real quick. God dang it. But while you looked that up, yeah. I I like we had a look. We got to see the Starks early on. We got to see the Baratheons, especially towards the end when we get into that. We got to see the relationship with the Lannisters being that we saw them as the head honchos in OG GOT. And now we got to, we got to see them kind of kissing up. I was like, ooh. This yeah. little, like for the fans, like the folks who watch GOT, it was like, Interesting. So y'all was groveling for that throne. That's interesting. Hey, so it's Tyrell. The High Towers Tyrell. Are the ancestors to the Tyrells. And I thought that was cool. And we get to like like you said, we hear familiar names like Lannister, Stark, Baratheon, Aaron. Mm-hmm. So it, I think it was really dope how they not only made it a Targaryen story because the Targaryens are at the center. But they also spaced out into, hey, here's the kingdoms. Here's how everybody's still connected and evolved. And this is how everybody was functioning under the rule of the Targaryens. And how yeah. that um, those functions are being affected by the whole plot. So I, I, really, I thought it was dope. And we really got to see how all of these houses fight to like... I want my family lineage to be be a part of the noble lineage, how all of them are fighting to marry the Targaryen king's daughters or eventual sons and try to marry them off so that, oh, my family can go down in history alongside the Targaryen name. Even though we saw that one part where it was like, oh, you marry my child, the Targaryen name will still be carried on in the books, but your lineage will be a part of my noble house. Just seeing how that political nuance, like I was like, okay. Okay, this is what y'all are really fighting for, like the the value that a name holds in the Game of Thrones. That was interesting. I like that um, we get to see, like going back to what you said, we get to see the full value of the Targaryen name. Because Mm -hmm. in Game of Thrones, with Daenerys just being the only Targaryen, beside Jon Snow, we don't, mm, whatever. But with Daenerys, you know, for a long time, being the only known Targaryen, she's like that ancient rarity, you know? Yeah. Here's all this, these myths and these things that we heard and these rumors about Targaryen blood. But House of the Dragon was like... This is this where is, they this come is from. Law. This is law. Like, mm-hmm. Targaryen blood is what's up. To be married into the Targaryens is what's up. For me to be related to him, to work for him, for my son to marry your daughter, and then our son or our child becomes a dragon rider. Like it shows you the value of the Targaryen name. And just going into that, like we'll we'll get into like how they're going to progress with the rest of the seasons. But I like that House of the Dragon put the Targaryens on so high a pedestal that the fall is going to be so good. Exactly. And seeing how they got down to just Daenerys and her brother and Jon Snow, because, like, it's, it's crazy. It's like, so good. Yeah, and even House Valarian, and, like, because they hold power. The Sea Snake is well known. And the way that mm-hmm. they was like, let's strengthen our houses. That was a common trend between those two houses in the show, bringing them back together. It's, like, interesting, because we, did we get Valarian? In GLT, we heard about Valarian well, Steel, yeah. but we never heard, we never got to hear much about the actual house. So we get to see, I, as the seasons go along, I am expecting to see a lot of these houses that weren't mentioned in Game of Thrones mm-hmm. fall. And 
I hope that in them falling, we get to see the evolution of the houses that we know. Exactly. Um, um, the next hot take I want to touch on, because this goes to your comment about the pacing. So season one did a couple, several time skips. Throughout yeah, like two or three, season. right? I think it's like two or three, two or three time mm-hmm. skips throughout the season. Um, did we feel like the time skips were necessary? And if we felt like they were necessary, did they help tell the story? So the most glaring parts of the time skips, and I know they can't help this, is the fact that um we see Renera, Allison, their children grow up, but then Allison's father still looking the same, like still looking the same 60 years old. Um the guy uh, I hate that man. I hate the guy. And I forgot his name. Renera's old fling, who was a knight. Christian he stayed. Cole. Christian Cole stayed looking the exact same. So it was kind of off putting in terms of we see these members in the cast age, but these don't. That was kind of off putting. Uh, but in terms of storytelling, I saw the value in it. And even if they started later on with where their ages were, like with their current ages, I feel like we would have missed out on all the stuff we got to see leading up to this, which is the history and how the relationships are formed. So I do like it. I, it, I, it would have been nice to see everybody age, but it's like, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I think the time skips, based on where the season left off, I think the time skips were necessary. Yeah. Um, I think, I, as far as like what the people look like, I've, not too mad about it because I'm thinking so more of it as how we see our parents. Like we get older and we start to look different, but then you look at your dad and your dad looks the same. Your mama True. looks the same. Or like some of your older cousins, they don't, they look about the same. So True. I didn't, I didn't focus too much in on like, some of the characters aging and some of the characters not aging, like yeah. visually. Um, Viserys I, aged though. He was sick. <laughs> 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 but, ah. My my boy Viserys was sick. If anything, the time skips. I will say this: the time skips did a really good job of like providing basically a countdown. Because, yes, Viserys has announced Rhaenyra as heir, Mm -hmm. but it only comes into play when he dies. So, on one side, you have Otto and the rest of the council during that time trying to plan out, you know, what's going to happen when Viserys dies. Rhaenyra's trying to figure out, you know, hold her claim, trying to make sure that everybody's still on her side for when that moment, when he dies... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their plans can go into play. And one thing the time skips did is that in every time skip, you see the series slowly, basically deteriorating before our eyes. And it finally happens in episode eight. Yeah. Finally, when he finally dies. And then at that moment, it was clock strikes zero. That's one mm. I that's one thing I really liked about the time skip. It's basically like this race against time. And I think they did a good job with the time skips by not alluding too much to like events that we wish we would have happened. You know when they have a time skip and they say, Oh, during this time skip something happened and was like, Well it would have yeah. been great if we saw it. But they I didn't like, hold our hands at all. Like they really let us figure it out over time as the audience, right? Or like the big events happened in that time period that we were watching. It mm-hmm. wasn't like episode seven. Um, this happens. Time skip. Over. Oh, Viserys is dead. What? I like that yeah. they let us watch him die, and then we keep moving. And and you want to know something? The fact that. I like adding on to how you said kind of like as a child you don't really see your cousins and aunts and everybody grow up. I like the fact that we were able to see Viserys age so badly due to his sickness and also due to the pressures of being king cuz that just alludes to how 
bad being in that position can really do to you. Like we we talk about the president, how all presidents go in with black hair <laughs> and then <laughs> come out gray. <laughs> like we really got to see that with Viserys, like all of these folks hounding him. This man was a peaceful guy. Now we watch GOT, we understand that being a nice guy gets you killed in season one. Mm-hmm. That trend still maintained, but seeing this this guy want to love his daughter, want to be involved with his family, loved his wife. He wasn't like one of the abusive guys from other GOT, uh, the other GOT um, series, but the fact that everybody's coming to him, everybody's scheming around him, his best friend, the hand scheming to get his daughter up in his chambers and saying, where your mama's dress. Like mm-hmm. everybody is trying to take that throne from him and figure out what happens next. And it wore, it wore him down. It literally yeah. aged half his face. And that was such a great, what I say, metaphor or symbolism, like really seeing that, that was that was well executed. That was very well executed. Yeah. It's so I I'm not too mad at the time skips. Now what I will say going into season two, I would like to see less time skips. I the yeah. way that the season ended with Eamon killing Luke and just that final that hmm. final scene of Renera and I saw on Twitter they did a side by side of Renera and Daenerys when they cut off Masande's head and I was like yeah it the war crimes start here and I think for the rest of the existence of House of the Dragon y'all just gonna have to let us ride that out like yeah you can skip a day or two we we used to skipping a day or two they did in the Game of Thrones but this year's yeah, leave it alone. I, I want to see how everybody feels. I because I haven't read the books. I don't know like the storyline of which one of um Rhaenyra's kids are going to grow up like her kids with Damon. I don't know about the 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 actual well, Valerian blooded daughters. I don't know what happens, but I want to yeah. see it happen in real time. I want to see the, all of that happen. The only going forward, the only way that I would accept a time skip is. Because Fire and Blood, the book that House of the Dragon is based off of, spans like 200 years. And at the beginning of House of the Dragon, it stated that these events are taking place 172 172 years before Daenerys. Now, Mm -hmm. if House of the Dragon is supposed to span that full 172 years, I will only accept a time skip if the end goal is the very very bottom fall where Daenerys is born in Dragonstone and they get her and her brother out and go to Essos if that's the end point then yeah. yes we're going to have to skip around some but if that's not the end point I want to ride this out because they finna get to the nitty gritty yeah and you saw how George R. R. Martin commented and said yeah for us to for the whole fire and blood story to be told it's going to require four seasons 10 episodes so i wonder that's that's probably at least one time skip per season if hbo follows through huh at least one it's, yeah and i hate to say it but if they're gonna tell the full 200 years the characters that you guys have become very fond of in season <laughs> one they they are going to die and it's going ah. it's going it's going to be if they execute this right it's going to be good because imagine it's it's like season one when Ned Stark dies and it's like oh no Ned mm. and then season two continues and season three continues and the story is just living on even though these major characters are being dropped off so if you are a Game of Thrones fan I wouldn't get to attach <laughs> Plot I armor was not a th- plot armor was not a thing in Game of Thrones until armor, season eight. <laughs> plot armor is not a thing. It it doesn't seem like it's a thing in House of the Dragon. Like they are showing that all of these characters are touchable in some way. Yeah, and we about to find out how y'all finna get oh, touched. No. And I did. Uh, I I don't want to skip to this, but I did not see Ren- like. I could tell, like, Rhaenyra's son, like, the second I saw the dragon in the claws, bro, like, that scene, I was like, is this talking when about, he... Talking about when he was flying in the shadow of Vagar. Yeah, and, the, and Vagar, I'm... like, was, like, ten times his dragon size. And I'm like, I know what's gonna happen, but please don't make it happen. 
Like, I'm like, please don't make it happen. Y'all got the rain. Y'all got the clouds. Please don't make it happen. <laughs> I I was on um, I was on the edge of my seat just like you. I was like this is bad like I'm rooting for Luke because I'm like yo please get home like go now and it, and it was like <clears throat> Renera personally purposely sent him to Storm's Edge because it was the closest because she knew that he can just get there and come and get back out. and that's crazy I was. It, it, they make you think that he got out. So that that part where he flew up out of the storm and he ended up in the clouds and you mm-hmm. think he made it out and then Vagar just comes out of nowhere and takes the biggest bubble bass bite out of that man's dragon. <laughs> Where's my pickles? <laughs> but, but, but that scene was so beautiful, bro, because you know some people forgot it was some good foreshadowing. Because remember when King Viserys, I forgot who he was talking to. I think it was Rhaenyra. He was talking to when, when he was like, it is an illusion for people to think that Targaryens control the dragons. We yeah. do not. And and Luke's dragon is the reason that Luke and him got killed. His dragon yeah. had no reason. Acting like a little chihuahua, trying to bark at a, do- trying to bark at a Rottweiler, and bring a little bit of fire on it. But it just come it prove that point and then it also just sh- shows you that these dragons are just like any other animal like the dragon mm-hmm. luke's dragon felt threatened so it went after the other dragon it, it and lashed it, out it oh i was like no not luke but if something had to set off the war and it was that like we were building up when allison misheard Viserys. Like, poor Viserys. He thought he was talking to Rhaenyra, and it was Allison there the whole time. And she took his words, misconstrued it, and ran with it. So we were already waiting to see when shit was going to pop off. And Mm -hmm. Rhaenyra, I commend her for this, trying to keep the peace. Because in the last episode, everybody basically wanted her to go to war. Damon was TTG. <laughs> I, listen, you let me tell you something about this last episode, bro. Damon was right. I don't care what y'all say. Damon, I don't care what y'all say. Damon was TTG. And Renera was trying to keep the peace. And I mm-hmm. respect her for that. Because I think Damon's thing is that Damon is that guy that when it's time for a fight, he gets excited. You know? Facts. And he and I think Damon was so hyper focused on because you remember at the beginning of the episode he assumed that they killed the series. Mm-hmm. Though we saw we the audience saw the series die of old age. Damon was under the impression that they killed him, which is fair because why y'all wait two days to tell me that my brother died? Yeah. And, and, then, how, and the way that y'all went about it and everything, like y'all was on some twisted like, stuff. Like Ray Nice come running in the castle talking about they held me captive. They crowned Aeon in the dragon pit. Like Damon was ready to go and like fights excite him. And I, you could physically see and feel the tension between him and Renera trying to regulate what are they going to do at this point. Because Damon right. is really trying to get everybody up in arms. He didn't name 13 dragons. He in the underground getting this other big ass dragon. The second and, largest dragon. Mm-hmm. And Renera is really trying to keep the peace. And you can feel that te- that that tension between them. But that's such it's such a great dynamic because aside from the incest, incest is nasty. Um <laughs> Because you see Rhaenyra trying to follow in her father's footsteps, even though she is a little bit wiser. I like that she is willing to take a few risks, but she is still trying to maintain peace for the realm. She ain't never just been like, I want all hell to break loose. She's like, I do want there to be peace. But Damon is such a polarizing character, bro. Like, I'm going to just state this. He's my favorite character. Not because he's just the best hero or nothing, but the way he's written, like, Damon loved his brother. He was a he was a jerk. 
he 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 was problematic, but he loved his brother. He loved Rhaenyra, his niece, wife. His niece, sling. wife, baby mama. From, from, <laughs> he loved Rhaenyra from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? And he's such a polarizing character that it's like, I can't get mad at him. He's right. He has a reason to be mad, bro. Yeah. Like, my, y'all had my brother on this, pop, what was it, poppy seed or whatever that drink they was milk giving him? Milk of the poppy. That was giving him lean. <laughs> you, got, you, got my you, got, <laughs> you got my brother drugged up on lean. <laughs> you got my brother drugged up. My my wife niece was supposed to be crowned queen. My brother stood there, marched in, I, limping, and said that she is queen still. I think Why is Damon, this happening? I think Damon had moments when I was like, okay, Damon, I... I'm I'm with you right here. And then Damon had his moments that was like Quit messing que- up. that questions his character. <laughs> like, let's start early, like him taking Renera to the brothel, him mm-hmm. killing his first wife with that I rock. Mean- we didn't see it happen on camera. We just presume. But- I he killed that lady with that rock, and you ain't gonna tell me different. <laughs> so because I'm gonna ask be- you this: Do you think that was his intention from the very beginning? Because the horse got scared and jumped. I- did he just take an opportunity, or did he plan to really kill her from the jump? Mm, maybe mm. I'm gonna say this: I think he went there to stir some shit, yeah. and the horse presented the opportunity for him to make the best cover up ever. I think Damon's goal is a mix between power and family. Because his first thing was just being upset that he wasn't on council and you know Viserys wasn't listening to him. So then you get you right. get that that family thing like you know I'm your brother. I should be the one advising you. But then you also, I also think of it as a position of power because think of what Damon could do or would do as the hand to the king. And then let's talk about his pursuit of Renera. Like he wanted to marry Renera while she was still 14. Yeah. And Viserys was like, nah, we not, we not about to do that. So he laid off. And when the opportunity presented itself, when Renera got older, he took it because then at this point, you prince consort to the king, to the queen. And we already saw, as we see in season 10, episode 10, where that got him, what he was willing to do with that position. But then also look at the dynamic because if if King Viserys had Damon on the actual king's court, a lot of things may have played out differently, at least in the Targaryen's favor. Because when you look at how many of those people were planning behind Viserys back, you probably needed your brother there. Yeah. You probably, or or at least put Renera on the court, but not as no cupbearer. Actually, have her in there seeing what's going on and give her a valuable position. But the king was, I'm gonna be honest, he was the peaceful king, but he was also the gullible king. I think him not putting Damon on there was his way to keep the peace because when they had Damon over the city watch. This man went out in the middle of the night and had a full massacre party. Like I they mean, had a full, they had a full murder party in the I, middle I, of the night. I, and I, you was it as as commander of the city watch. This is what you do. Not, nothing like a little bit of genocide to get you in the mood. <laughs> like, like I feel Viserys as you can't even do right with the position that you got. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. the other thing, which is like another of like one of the central points of House of the Dragon was, can we allow a woman to be queen? It's all yeah. in, in the misogyny. So even like the fact that Renera was a cupbearer, your own family, you have her in the room, but not sitting at the table. She is a royal. She is a noble Targaryen. She is the princess. This is Princess yes. Renera. Targaryen, your firstborn, and you have her as a cupbearer. Now, I feel him if that was the only way for everybody to agree to put her in the room. Now, nepotism worked on that level, but come on now. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's crazy because, 
you know what? Even even talking about the moments where they talk about like the inequalities between men and women in the show, you mm-hmm. know what I really like about House of the Dragon? Like, GOT showed a lot of like the what's the proper way to say this? The forced intercourse and all of that good stuff. Mm-hmm. But I liked in House of the Dragon how they tackled like a woman's battlefields, like having the babies and seeing like women from another perspective and seeing like what they actually went through before modern medicine and all that. Like that stuff was tough. I and think, then Renera being a princess too and having to be queen and still having to deal with like I got real doctors for like childbirth. That. Like that was crazy. I think some of those parts were unnecessary. Like you I do? think I, I just want to start with episode one. What was the reason <laughs> for y'all showing us this medieval C section? Well, it foreshadowed like the upcoming stuff because like at the end of the day, one thing that women in the series are always vulnerable to is that. You saw with Damon's um, second wife, the Valerian the Valerian woman, and then you saw Rhaenyra going through this, and at the end of but the day, I it's always a risk. I understand. I think they could have expressed that risk without showing us that. And it, it made your and skin crawl. I had to pause the episode. Like, are we? I was like, yo, are we doing this right now? But not even that piece. The piece where uh, Renera has the miscarriage, I think, yeah, was a bit unnecessary on their part. See, I I enjoyed it though because it's like it still showed those dynamics. Like your and it, and it really showed a little bit more about Damon's character too. Because, like, he is so war-ridden. He loves him there. But at the same time, your wife niece is up here giving birth and screaming to the top of her lungs. Why ain't you going to check on her? Is it because you're scared because of what happened to your second wife? Are you so battle-hungry that you don't want to go up there? And then Rhaenyra having to go through that, burn just, her child, then plan for a war? It was a lot of dynamics. I just think the part where the baby falls out and it's all deformed and stuff. <laughs> I I personally feel like that could have been left out. I think <laughs> we could have edited that a bit better. So you can see the sea snake's br- head get cut in half by Damon but looking like a Mortal Kombat but fatality. I, but like <laughs> I was I, I will say this. We are desensitized to certain pieces of violence. But some things, even then, some things are a bit too much. And I felt like that was too much because this is the difference. The sea snake, um, I think his name was Bayman, right? Him getting his head cut off was quick and clean. You know, that's it. It was one of those, oh, damn, moments. (laughs) 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 It was like, well, damn. but. Renera, my... like this, Keep like this, away. like this whole that whole scene with Renera was like, okay, you guys are kind of dragging this out. Like that was a full like one and a half, two minute scene that we're just sitting here watching her have a miscarriage. And I don't it, know. It made your it made your skin crawl a little bit. You was like, Ugh. I look that C section scene. I had to pause it. I was like, what? I, it had you know what it did for me though that I did like I was like okay if they're showing this in episode one that means they taking all the risk and one thing about Game of Thrones is it is not for the light of heart it is not for the people who got a fear of blood it like if you don't want to see some stuff you don't need to watch this I and think, it gave me encouragement I think maybe for those scenes because I I think the reason why I feel like they could have left it out because I could see those scenes as being a bit triggering, like miscarriages mm-hmm. and C sections, and maybe I don't I don't know if it I don't know if House of the Dragon would get too much shit on this, but if it does, then maybe just because of how we know modern society is, maybe they should just start putting like a warning at the beginning of the episode that this. This episode contains this, that, and the third. I will give you that, but the th- I w- but I'll also say all of all of House of the Dragon is very triggering. The last episode when yep. Damon we we basically saw like domestic yeah. violence, yeah. like you know what I'm saying. Like 
I, I agree with you. There for people who may be unfamiliar with the franchises in comparison to us, they probably should have like, hey, these are the topics that will be expressed in this show. You might not want to watch it. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's going back to the fact that we're so desensitized to certain pieces of violence. Like, mm-hmm. we hate to see it, but we're not uncommon. It's not uncommon for us to see domestic violence in media. It's not uncommon for us to see people get their heads cut off in, in, in media. We see it all the time in Mortal yeah. Kombat, other fantasy shows, horror films. Yeah. and But... um. I don't know. I I just maybe just because I don't know being a female and seeing that and then seeing just seeing the risk of and seeing it in such an intense manner. Is yeah. That I that I could see it going past. Oh, we're just watching a C section too. We're watching a C section. But I will say, as a guy, it it made me almost more sensitive to the female characters. And I feel like that's the real benefit of it because I never thought about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, it may have popped up in my mind. Like, Oh, I bet births were rough back in those times. Cause the they was for, rough. Like, they yeah. Was like there rough. are, there are I'll... some historical accuracies to this. Yeah. And it, I... it made me go like shawty. I wouldn't even like, if I was a woman, I wouldn't even want to, be a, I wouldn't even want to have. I nah, wouldn't even like, want to have babies, bro. I'm, I have, I said this from Game of Thrones. If I was a woman, I am a woman. But if I, if, <laughs> <laughs> I am a woman, just just to keep it one hundred. But if I was in Game of Thrones, I would have to be so far away from the bullshit that they got going on because it's 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 very they. Game of Thrones, I think, did a good job showing the hardships for women series mm-hmm. but i think house of the dragon took it to really showed her. to really show the especially for like royal bloodlines and like like we we go to lena who's being set she's 12 and she's being set up to marry viserys's old ass and i was like that cannot like Allison, i i Allison. no Oh, you was talking about his first wife. Oh my god! No, Lena, the the little girl. Oh, the Valerian, Valerian. girl. Yeah, I I I, I kind of pushed that to the back of my head. But I'm just saying though, like, how do you yeah. process being a 12 year old child and your daddy, your parents, people who are you supposed to trust, is selling you to an old ass man for power? I. I forgot. I'm not gonna lie to you. I forgot about that scene because I was like episode three or four. I ain't gonna lie. I I was like, thank you, Viserys, for looking at that little girl and saying no. She's younger than I, my daughter. I can't do it. I said this. I I said I'll give Viserys props for not marrying a twelve year old child, but to go marry your daughter's best friend hey. <laughs> <laughs> is that is messy. That, uh, that is scandalous. That was Littlefinger Jr.'s fault, though. That was Otto saying, hey, go talk to the king. You you know his favorite drink. Wear your mama's dress. That and was Allison something. over that here was... prickling her fingers because she had anxiety that bad the entire time. Like, that, that, this I, was a setup. I knew Allison was on some bullshit from the minute I looked at her. I said, something's not right about you. Mm-mm. Something, something's not right about you. You're gonna be on some bullshit later, ain't you, Allison? Like, but, like, I don't like you for some reason. <laughs> but really, let's let's talk about the women. We've been talking about the women in House of the Dragon for a minute, but I think they I versus our conversation about how the women characters and Lord of the Rings were treated. I think they did a good job. This the women in House of the Dragon, from Allison to Renera to Lena, like, Lena didn't even have a big part in the series, but we felt for Lena during that that whole scene before her death. We were able to, we really got to dive deep into Rhaenys and, like... Rhaenys being stuck in the old ways and pretty much accepting them while trying to tell Rhaenyra, hey, you can't change this, but then seeing Rhaenyra change right in front of her, we got to see a lot of the women characters in so many different facets that aren't just, like, the damsel in distress stereotypes, and I really enjoyed that. Yeah, or and 
I guess we saw a lot of women characters trying to push them themselves through this patriarchy. Like in Game of Thrones, um, of course you have Daenerys, the standout char- standout character. Um, but we really didn't and then you had Cersei doing her thing, but I think some of like the side female characters that we saw like played their their pieces alongside like the other male characters. The only reason I'll push you a little bit is because in Game of Thrones, but it was also a lot longer. So I will say House of the Dragon kind of squished it all in season one. But Marjorie and Marjorie's grandma, like Game of Thrones did have some really good female characters who was like, we playing the game. We understand how other people view us, but we have our own desires as well. And we're going to yeah. fight to get down. I like, I just feel yeah. like this. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'll just say this. George R. R. Martin, just a great, a phenomenal writer. He did, he did all them justice. I, yeah. And, um, what was I about to say? I lost my thought. But let's talk about Mr. George. Mr. George. Because Mr. George, he had a very big part in this series. Um, Mm -hmm. based on recent news that we, we heard when this, before the series was about to air is that he was heavily involved in the series than he was in the later half of Game of Thrones. Do we feel like that paid dividends to the series? Most definitely. For And you know what? For him, yes, and even the showrunners, for him to say, y'all did a great Viserys. Y'all's interpretation of Viserys from the little bit of information from my book was better than what I wrote. And mm-hmm. that's that's commendable. That don't normally happen. So I feel like George R. R. Martin being involved, I feel like all these other studios and Amazon, Disney, they need to take note. Get the original writer if they're still living and have them really play a part. I think, I agree with you. I think it paid dividends that they had George R. R. Martin in the room because the series did step away from, you know, some piece of the book. But I've said this before, all media does that. It steps mm-hmm. away from the from the the lore a bit, but him being in the room, him still committing the series, even though they made tweaks to the original lore, I think made me even more excited to watch the series. Knowing him, knowing that he was involved, made me excited for House of the Dragon. But getting seen and hearing his step of approval on the series made me even more excited. My exactly. only Playing devil's advocate, my only thing is that this is just season one. And this could easily go the same way with Game of Thrones, where George R. R. Martin is involved in season one. He might be involved in season two. The showrunners get too big for their britches, and season three and season four, we never hear from <laughs> we never hear from them again. I'm I'm sorry, bro. That that petition with season eight of GOT had like a million plus signees. I'm sorry, bro. They, I don't. They need to keep George R. R. Martin here. If anything, they they need to take his notes right now. What do you want us to do for season two, three, and four, George? Give us. Well, they said they're they're about to start filming. I saw that they're about to start filming 2023. So yeah, I will say this: as long as they keep George R. R. Martin in the room, I think we are about to get delivered a very good. Three next three seasons of House of the Dragon. How dare how dare Rings of Power start recording their season two before House of the Dragon? That's crazy. I t- I'm sorry. I told you I'm they sorry. trying they trying to push they trying. I'm push. I'm sorry I'm sorry I, I, I this is about House of the Dragon but I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, ooh ooh that's disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, that's disrespectful. I I hope they I really hope they keep him in the room. I hope they keep him involved. I think. Because let's just look at the success of Harry Potter and ha- mo- how most of that success came from J.K. Rowling being in the room, signing off, you know, you know, they, mm-hmm. they in the movies, they didn't do the full book. They tweaked a couple things. We know this, but it this series was still enjoyable and the franchise is still enjo- enjoyable. 
because she was involved in the production of it. Yeah. And we got the amazing franchise hit. But and that's and that's the funny part because I'm like, this is a proven success story. That's why it kinda irritates me when like showrunners and the producers and all of them get a little I, I wanna say it's just arrogance. It could be another better way to um describe that, but people fell in love with the original books or the mm-hmm. original series. Like they fell in love with that. Hence why y'all getting these million dollar budgets to turn it into a movie. Please get the writer for some level of influence. Like, yeah. please get their their thumbs up or something. Like, just even get ideas from them because it's a proven success story. Yeah, i I think the showrunners did a good job putting him in the room, and mm-hmm. I hope they continue to put him in the room. But I want to, you know, take a step back. You had brought up the petition for Game of Thrones season eight. Um. The next hot take that I have, or planned hot take, we've been through a couple hot takes already, but the next planned hot take (laughs) of this mob review was, can House of the Dragon bring back fans of the franchise who dropped off Game of Thrones Season 8? This is a difficult question to answer because I actually talked to somebody who was a big fan of Game of Thrones, and they have not started House of the Dragon. I was like, bro, you got to watch this. It's super good. They was like, no, nah, I, I I, will speak with my wallet, and I won't watch this because of how terrible Great Game of Thrones Season 8 and Season 7 were. And I was like, but man, they, they actually doing a good job. They was like, I don't care. And now for those people who stick, who have strong resolve and they stick to what they believe in, Probably not until season two, and then they see, oh, y'all did this good. They y'all did a great job twice. Maybe I will check it out. But for people like us, I remember watching season eight. It sucked, but we still somewhat enjoyed season eight. You know what I mean? Like you remember was watching at your house. We jumped into Arya scene and everything else. Enjoy the first two episodes of season eight, and then the rest of it was like, are we watching the same show right now? Is this yeah? (laughs) <laughs> and it's like, and 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 I was pissed off. Like, yeah, season eight messed it up for me. Season seven was kind of on the downfall, but I can't deny that seasons one through six, Battle of the Bastards, the first mm-hmm. scene where they where they subsided our expectations and the hero was killed off before we even finished season one. So, like, because of that, if you enjoyed the first half of Game of Thrones and you love the franchise, you love the world, I say come back and try give House of Dragons a try. I think, I think, I agree. I think because of, see, because there's eight seasons of Game of Thrones and it's only the last season, one of them, it's really bad that they made the last season as bad as it was, but one out of eight, you, it's, it's, the numbers don't add up for you guys to just cancel the whole series. I get it. We're upset. We don't we like the it. way they did Daenerys. We don't like, you know, we're not big fans that Arya was the one to kill the Night King after that was her, Jon Snow's whole purpose. The pacing was so, kind of trash, despite how they started off. We get it. There's a lot of complaints with Game of Thrones Season 8, but I think that given that it's one out of the eight, I think maybe you guys should let it slide. Because House of the Dragon, they they coming with it. They are. They they are coming with it. Um, and the cinematography at, did not take over either. Like it at, was actually at, good writing at all. And the other thing I was gonna say is like, as a, I think for any franchise, you're going to have that one bad season, or even <clears> if it's a movie series, you're gonna have that one bad movie, but. I don't, for me, I don't think season eight was that bad for me that I had to turn away from the whole series. It was kind of like, uh, I would never rewatch the season again. But when they said they were doing House of the Dragon, I was like, yeah, let's go. Like, I'm a fan of Game of Thrones. Daenerys was one of my favorite characters. And this is a prequel story about her bloodline. Like, yeah, let's go. And and one thing I'll say is like you can't deny that Game of Thrones is probably one of the most impactful 
legendary series, not even just live action, just period, point blank. For its generation, Game of Thrones was one of the most legendary series. And I feel like House of the Dragon, right now, is one of the best things you can watch on TV. Maybe I yeah. need to expand my palette. I watch a lot of anime. But this is one of the best things I've seen on TV so far for the past couple of years. I Yeah. At, at, like, as fantasy series goes, I think this, mm-hmm. The Witcher, um, are definitely... These are, these are some standout, some standout series. If Mm -hmm. this, my final statement is, if you've been contemplating whether you was going to watch House of the Dragon, (laughs) see Game of Thrones season eight cuts you so deep that you're still healing, I think House of the Dragon will heal you. I think this, I think season one was done really well. Um, I think that the characters were written beautifully. Um, I think the fact going just going back to the fact that the author himself was heavily involved in the series, which is a drastic difference from what they did with Game of Thrones season six through eight. So I I feel like that's the highest selling point for Mm -hmm. House of the Dragon. But if you're on edge about the series, I I definitely recommend this is on the mob's recommendation list. Go watch House. Go watch House of the Dragon. Watch House of the Dragon. Even now, uh, obviously, if someone sat through this video this long, hopefully they have seen it because it's been spoiled. But yeah. if you, even if you ain't watch Game of Thrones, you can watch House of the Dragon first and then go watch a Game of Thrones. Yeah, because I really don't think you, you, I'm gonna say this: you don't have to watch Game of Thrones at all to understand a lick of what's going mm-hmm. on in House of the Dragon. Like they don't make any, um foreshadowing remarks they don't make any um analogies or any um hints to anything that happens in game of thrones you could literally enjoy this series as its own entity and not touch one episode of game of thrones exactly like they talk about the prophecy and everything like over the wall and stuff but at the same time you don't need to watch Game of Thrones to still enjoy, like, ooh, what's this prophecy all about? What's the Song of Fire and Ice? Right. Like, it's still, it's still very good. It is, just, it's pretty independent. Like, you don't have to know who Ned Stark and Robert Baratheon, all of them are, to understand that there's Starks and Baratheons in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. You don't need to know who da- Daenerys Targaryen is to understand this whole Targaryen bloodline because they lay it flat out for you. They do. <laughs> You didn't need to know that the Targaryens love their incest either. You're going to get shown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I think the familiarity is cool. Like, ooh, Stark, I've heard that name before. Baratheon, Lannister. Mm-hmm. And it's cool to know where they started and we know where they end up, you know, at the end of all of it. But this. I actually like the fact that you can enjoy House of the Dragon as an entity in its own. Yeah. I think I think that's pretty dope how they they set that up and like did the information. And how you feel about the announcements about a John Stowe Snow spinoff and a Sea Snake spinoff? Not a John Stowe. I think it was John. <laughs> <laughs> um. I have no idea what they would do with a Jon Snow series. Like, is this after they banished him to the wall? I will say this. I think we could get any other Game of Thrones spinoff other than spinoffs that spin directly off the series. Like, the Sea Snake one is dope. Yeah, that's gonna be dope. But why are we getting a Jon Snow series? Like, I would definitely like to see more people in Essos if they were to do another spinoff. Like, I like to see what some of those families and stuff out there are doing. Like, we've been following, we've been following this man for eight seasons. Why does he need a spinoff? Yeah, this man then had so many spinoffs inside of Game of Thrones. Like, first Mm. season, Jon Snow with the Starks. Next spinoff, Jon Snow as a um Night man watch. of the watch. Next, Jon Snow as 
a man outside of the wall. Next what, spinoff. What? What were those John people Snow. called? His little girlfriend from the cave? What was her people called? The Wildlings. Jon Snow the as a Wildling. <laughs> Next spinoff, Jon Snow as a Targaryen. Like, the man that has so many spinoffs inside of Game of Thrones, why does he be another one? Jon Snow the Auntie Conqueror. <laughs> 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 I that's one of out of all of the Game of Thrones um extensions that they're making because they're making an animated series too. I forgot what it's supposed to be focused on, but I didn't see those news. That news. I'm I'm definitely they're making an animated se- I can't remember what is going to be focused on, but they are making a Game of Thrones animated series and I'm definitely excited for that. Mm. I'm definitely excited for the sne- sea snake because like you, we mentioned earlier, House Valerian isn't really mentioned at all as a house. It's not really mentioned at, at all in Game of Thrones. So this would be a nice, what's, you know, keeping up with the Valerians type thing. But why do we need see to some... see Jon Snow? And you know what? That Sea Snake stuff is going to be pretty cool. We're, gonna, we're probably going to see a lot of more pirate warfare, like ships we'll going probably... against each other and stuff. We'll probably go to Essos a lot. True. So we might get more of Essos in this Sea Snake series. Hey, I, before we close out, the second most iconic scene aside from Renera's son getting ate up. Those childs are bastards! And that- she is a whore. <laughs> Chop! I, I feel like it was one of those scenes like, yo, bro, everybody knows. You're right. Everybody knows that you're right, bro. But this was not the place to say that. He said, I ain't got nothing else to lose. I know this is treason, but I'm going to die and say what I got to say. <laughs> that was the most iconic scene, bro. <laughs> Viserys got up. Uh, 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 what was it? Cane in hand, and said, "I'll have your tongue." <laughs> Damon said, "Nah, no." Nah, it, it was so funny because Viserys, with his one eye, crippling, walking like <laughs> the old dude from Family Guy, pulled out that little pocket knife, <laughs> and I was like, "What are like, you about to do with this pocket like, what knife?" You- what you gonna do to this guy? He is a warrior. This man can fight. What, what you gonna do to him, Viserys? Come on hey, now. Hey, look. Look. <laughs> and, and, it was... And, and because we're blurred, we gotta say this. The Valerians are black. They black. We knew that, we knew that them children <laughs> we, <laughs> not we, Valerian. <laughs> we, look. They they tried to like throw shade in the most medieval way possible, like at the <laughs> funeral and stuff. But let's just all say it: them kids not black. <laughs> them kids, I think I think somebody said it. Somebody said it to um the sea snake, and they was like, "Them kids don't look like you." <laughs> it was like don't, as long as my house lives on, those them, those kids ain't them, black. Them kids don't look like you. Like they ain't mixed that there's not a lick of black in like them. I'll give you I'll give you grandfather of the year award for loving them kids despite the information despite knowing what everybody can plainly see I'm like I will give you I will give you grandfather of the year award for that bro and let's talk about, real quick what's the old dude name who who be working with Allison Lord Laris Lestrong or whatever you talking about Miss talk, talking about Mister Only Feet. <laughs> trading feet for info oh my for god for info. like oh my god if it's not a game of thrones series unless they put some weird shit in there and that was the pinnacle of weird shit that happened in that series not only was you trading information for feet he got to jack off in front of the queen <laughs> to some to calf some meat feet. <laughs> feet ankles and calf meat <laughs> to the feet in front of the queen i at least she had the decency to look away <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> bro there are so many things wrong with that i'm like allison not you selling feet it's and not then, 
It's not Game of Thrones unless they do some off the wall weird shit. And that was and it. I, and I saw the funniest meme on Twitter, bro. They was like, the Game of Thrones fans watching incest. It is what it is. Game of Thrones watching foot fetishes. <laughs> But it was it was the way they took the foot fetish. Like, okay, she's selling her feet for information. But when that man put his hands in his pants, and she it was like, away. whoa! She was like, oh my god! <laughs> like, and, and what's funny that was post time skip. So like, we saw them build like their little hey queen, I'm a support you relationship, and it's like this is what that evolved into. Baby girl, it was really, it was, feet. it was really like, I think Laris is just that manipulative uh, type. Like, I will do, he will, his whole thing, of, I will do exactly what you want, but I'm going to do it in the worst way possible. And you're not going to complain about it Cause you or like tell anybody, are you telling anybody? Because one, you like the results. And two, are you really going to admit that the queen had me go and burn these people alive? Bro, like pull your feet uh, out. <laughs> re- destroyed a whole house. Like, well, he he basically became the heir to his house because he killed his brother and mm-hmm. his father. Mm-hmm. Um, all those little f- spies in the brothels and stuff. Like he he was wicked, taking folks out of prison that he was harassing mm-hmm. and torturing. Like yeah. that, I, I he's re- sick. Next season, he's someone we got to keep our eyes on. He's he, uh, someone who I might already, get a good showing. Yeah. He now that this war is about to take off and we're touching the one hour mark. But my <coughs> last question. Give me your biggest theory for season two. My biggest theory I don't think we're going to see the face off between Damon and um which one of Al- the Allison son who had Amen. the one eye? We're not going to see the face off between Damon and Eamon that we want to see. I feel like we're going to see Damon's daughters take over. I think I I ain't read the books. I think we're going to see his daughters go go hard in this next season. Hmm. Okay. My biggest theory is that <clears throat> so I saw something going back to my Renera and Daenerys side by side. Is this where the Mad Queen, the madness and the blood, and the Targaryen blood starts? Hmm. I I honestly feel like Rhaenyra would um not pull the trigger at the end. If it if it came down to her and Allison, like if we get that scene, I it, don't think but, Rhaenyra would pull the trigger. But let's talk about I want to do a side-by-side compar- comparison of Cersei and Rhaenyra. Cersei didn't start doing that wicked-ass shit until her children started dropping off like flies. So, Rhaenyra had been keeping the peace, even though her lover died, her dad died, her best friend married her daddy, they betrayed her. they betrayed her, us- usurped her throne. Like yeah. such, so she had so many reasons to go batshit crazy and decided to keep the peace. But then you killed her child. I think I think we about to see a different Renera come season two, and I would be curious to know because Renera and Damon are Neris's like. I want to say they're her great grandparents or great great grandparents. So I want to know if this is where that Mad King Mad Queen bloodline starts. The only the only thing about it though is because Rhaenyra is a dragon rider, but is her dragon one of the fully grown ones? Like hers oh. is fully grown at this point, correct? Right or is it not? I think so. I I. I'm interested to see how they put her in battle because she's going to be an interesting role because, yes, she's a dragon rider, but she's also a princess. That's if they let her battle. Exactly. Because because she's now, she's vulnerable. Like, even, but even, like, before they crowned her queen, like, the minute that Viserys died, it's like, you, there's a target on your back. Like, we can, we can physically touch you now. 
Like Viserys, like in these previous episodes, Viserys has been defending you. We haven't done nothing to you. We've been biding our time because Viserys is here. As soon as that man kicked the bucket, it's the same thing I was saying. As soon as he kicked the bucket, the countdown stopped and it was on and popping. Yeah. And that and that's the thing, cause and then I'll also say, I know I know we had time, I know we had time. But like Damon getting the second biggest dragon at the end of the episode, like we obviously know which dragon that is, but Damon's already bonded to his own dragon. Mm-hmm. So I don't I want to know who's actually gonna ride that dragon, because I don't think he can ride the other dragon as long as he got his own dragon that he's bonded to. So I guess even- I guess we'll find out. The other thing is is that Let's go back to Daenerys, that how Daenerys was able to fully bond herself to three dragons. True. So it's not uncommon for a Targaryen to bond themselves to more than one dragon. So will Daemon be mm. able to bond himself to the dragon he has in this big ass dragon that he got in this last episode? And wasn't one of his daughters she still doesn't have a dragon? Like wasn't that no. what she was talking to her I mom don't... about? I don't see him giving one of them babies that fat ass dragon. I can see him giving his dragon to one of I mean, them. I mean, one of them, one of them was married to Luke. I mean, was betrothed to Luke. I, she gonna be upset. Her man I got un- killed. I understand, but if my other theory is that Renera gonna let Damon lose, and if Renera lets Damon lose, he gonna want to hit the scene. In that big ass yeah. dragon. You ain't gonna tell me <laughs> he went down there to get that big ass dragon to let somebody else ride it to King's Landing. Man, I see Damon seeing Otto and being like, I don't even wanna burn you. Stepping off his dragon, like, I'm gonna fight you one on one. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you hurt like, my fuck, my brother. Yeah. I'm I'm ready. So I guess until next time, which will probably be twenty twenty four. We talk about season two. Uh. (laughs) Let's go ahead and shut this down. Once again, I want to thank you, Ron, for joining me on another episode of Blurred My Podcast. I want to thank everybody who's been listening, whether this is your first time or your 50th time watching. Your listens, your watches, the feedback, everything is greatly appreciated. Um, Leave a comment. Like this video. Let us know how you felt about House of the Dragon. Uh, season one um follow us on instagram at the blurred mob pod follow us on twitter at the blurred mob look us up on facebook um and youtube if but you're already on youtube so never mind but find us on facebook at the blurred mob podcast find us on tiktok too at the Blair Mob Podcast. <laughs> it's cool. But if, you, it. but if you're listening, but if you're listening, find us on YouTube at the Blair Mob Podcast. <laughs> and share it. Tell your, fr- tell your friends about tell, it. Tell, tell your friends about it. Also, Everybody. like, um, I greatly appreciate the feedback that we got on the Rings of Power uh, mob review. So definitely leave a comment. Tell us how you felt about the series. Um, if you have any theories, let us know. We will we read all the comments, we respond to mm-hmm. all the comments. So just let us know what's up. And all right, this is the mob checking out. Peace. Hands up if you love them where you at. Stand ten toes down, shot. Ain't no looking. Ain't no looking, man. You can let them haters hate when they answer where I'm smiling.